All right, so let's take a look at the second example. This time around, we're going to look at pressure. And the equality that I want to present to you is the one between atmospheres and pounds per square inch. They both represent pressure. And in one atmosphere, we have 14.7 psi. Since that equality represents the same thing, just in different units, we can write that as a fraction. We could have the one atmosphere on top or the 14.7 psi on the bottom or the 14 psi on top and the one atmosphere is on the bottom. If it so happens that the pressure we have given is 1.4 atmospheres and we're asked to find the psi, then we start with the 1.4 atmospheres and we pick the fraction that has atmospheres on the bottom, specifically the second fraction to cancel out the units, the atmospheres in this case, and leave behind psi. Multiplying 1.4 by 14.7 will yield a value of 20.6 psi. We're going to do a few more examples uh, where we make the process a little bit more complex, but the logic is still going to apply the same way. You're going to have an equality and you will use the equality to convert one unit to another. All right, so we're going to talk first about dimensional analysis in respect to conversion factors. And the idea right here is that you could be dealing with a measurement that's very large compared to the base value, the base unit, the meter in this case, or it could be something a lot smaller than the meter. So um, we're going to end up using prefixes to refer to each of, you know, each of these instances. We could have um, a thousand meters present and instead of saying that, we could say that we have one kilometer. Those are equivalent things. They're equalities of each other. So the little k stands for kilo. You could have big M, in which case you're dealing with the mega. So the one megameter equals one million meters. You could also have the gigameter. So one gigameter equals a billion meters. And going further up, you could have the terameter, in which case you're dealing with one trillion meters, or the petameter, in which the case you're dealing with one quadrillion meters. And if we go even further, we can get to the exameter, which has a quintillion meters present in it. Now that's going to the large, that's going to the very large regime. In the in dimensional analysis we could also go in the small uh, segment in which case everything with the prefix will be smaller than the meter if we have a hundred tiny little things within the meter we're talking about the centi if we have a thousand of them we have uh, the millimeter if we have a million of them we have the micrometer if we have a billion of them we're dealing with the nanometer uh, dealing with 10 million of them is called the angstrom, and 10 million angstroms, excuse me, 10 billion angstroms is associated with the meter. After that, we have 1 trillion picometers present in 1 meter, and then we have 1 quadrillion femtometers in 1 meter. Now, as you can see, writing all these zeros can be a rather annoying task to perform each time that we're switching from one unit to another. So instead of that, we can rewrite all the numbers by counting how many zeros they have. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. This one has three zeros, two zeros. Instead of writing all the zeros out, we can rewrite the number as 10 to the number of zeros that it has. So notice the one right here, six zeros. We can rewrite that as 10 to the six. And pretty much the exponent right here is telling you how many zeros there were after the number one, right? So one megameter has 10 to the 6 meters 10 to the third millimeters has one meter and so you're basically on the hook for memorizing and remembering the conversions uh, for the tera all the way down to the femto and to make it more exact the prefixes apply to any type of unit the, the base unit does not need to be the meter that was just an example the base unit could be the atmosphere, it could be the gram, it could be the liter. You could use any particular unit of you know, volume, length, mass, etc. But um, the values right here, the 1 tera is equal to 10 to the 12 
whatever the unit is. 10 to the third millis equal 1x, etc., etc. So this is the part that you really want to remember. 1 tera x equals 10 to the 12x. Uh, 10 to the 15 fx equals 1x, etc., etc. And as I said, x right here represents pretty much any unit. And by the way, the unit need not be a scientific unit. It could just be an English unit, right? It could be feet, ounces, inches, uh, you know, pounds per square inch. You know, you could actually use any of the English units along with the prefixes, right? So just be aware of it. X represents any particular unit. It could be any of these things. All right, so let me give you an example. We have a block that is 20 micrometers in length. I want to find out what that length is in gigameters. All right, so two things to um, think right out of the bat. Since we're talking about micrometers, we ought to think about the conversion between micrometers and meters. And since we're talking about gigameters, we have to think about the conversion between the gigameter and the meters. Specifically, there is one gigameter for every 10 to the 9 meters. And for every 10 to the 6 micrometers, there is one meter. Okay, so what we do is acknowledge the fact that we can write two fractions with either of these two equalities. Um, we have uh, maybe gigameter on top or bottom and 10 to the 9 meters on the opposite end of the fraction, or we can have 10 to the 6 micrometers on the top and bottom and the meter on the opposite end. So we're going to determine which one we're going to be using. In order to do that, we start with the number we've been given, the 20 micrometers. All right, so we have micrometers on top, so we have to pick the fraction that has micrometers on the bottom, and that will be the fraction right here. So we're going to multiply the 20 micrometers by 1 meter, and we're going to divide it by 10 to the 6 micrometers. Then, this cancels out micrometers, now we have meters. And since we're trying to go to gigameters, now we need to look at these conversion factors. Meters are present on top, so we need to pick the fraction that has meters on the bottom, and that will be the fraction here on the left side. So we're going to multiply this by 1 gigameter, and we're going to divide it by 10 to the 9 meters. The meters will cancel out, and we will now have gigameters. So what I recommend that you do in your calculator is input the numbers with exponents in parentheses. So to have 20 divided by 1 times, in parentheses, 1 times 10 to the 6, close parentheses, press enter. Then divide by 1 times 10 to the 9, close parentheses, press enter. And the idea right here is that you multiply numbers that are on the numerator and you divide by numbers that are in the denominator. And I typically perform the operations as I read this from left to right. So I say, okay, you have a 20. Next number that is not 1, is that on the top or the bottom? Here it happens to be on the bottom, so I end up dividing by it and then pressing enter. Then I look at the next number and say, okay, where is the non unity number? And that will be the number on the bottom. So I end up dividing my answer from the previous calculation by 10 to the 9 and pressing enter. Alternatively, you could look at the exponents. And one way to rewrite your 20 is to say, well, 20 is the same thing as having a decimal point at the end of this zero, technically speaking. So you could bring that decimal point in front of the first number here to the uh, at the beginning of the, the sequence. And that 20 is the same thing as saying 2 times 10. So you could write this as 2.0 times 10 to the first. And here I use a little trick that I want to show you, not to say that I'm going to hold you responsible for doing this on your exams, but it's a little trick that you can use to check whether your answers are making sense or not. And it's basically simply to look at the times 10 to the whatever number. If you're on the top portion of the fraction, you add the exponents together. If the number is in the denominator, you end up changing whatever the value is here and adding it to the original value. So we have one, six, and nine, but the six and the nine are numbers on the bottom. So you're gonna subtract six and nine from one. So you'll have one minus six minus nine, which is the same thing as negative 14. And so your answer is, ends up being 2.0 times 10 to negative 14 gigameters. Now granted, this you do not need to do. You're going to have calculators and you should use your calculators to perform the calculation. But in case you want to double check whether your answer is making sense, double check that you didn't make a mistake when inputting the numbers. This is how you can check whether your exponents are making sense or not. Okay, so the next problem deals with conversions from 
units of cubic length and liters. So in this case, we have uh, a cube that has a length of 300 micrometers and we want to find out what's the volume of the cube with the key idea that the volume of the cube is the length raised to the third power, right? So L cubed. All right, so the idea is that here we're going to have one additional conversion factor, one that I need you to remember for the remaining portion of the class and even beyond that, uh, specifically that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. So this will allow us to switch from the realm of liters into the realm of cubic length. All right, and right here we have 300 micrometers that we're trying to convert to volume and that volume will be in cubic length. We want to change that cubic length to uh, liters ultimately. Well, ultimately it will be microliters. All right, so here's the idea. We have micrometers. We want to go towards centimeters so that we access this relationship. So centimeters, we know that we have 100 of them in one meter, so we can have either of these two fractions. And for micrometers, we know that there's 10 to the 6 micrometers in one meter, so we have either of these two fractions. So starting with the 300 micrometers, we have micrometers on top, so we make sure to pick the fraction that has micrometers on the bottom. Okay, so we have 10 to the 6 micrometers on the bottom, one meter on top. Then we have 10 to the second centimeters on top and one meter on the bottom. And we're picking this fraction because we want the meters to cancel out. Right, so micrometers cancel out, meters cancel out. And if you perform this calculation in your calculator, 300 divided by 1 times 10 to the 6, press enter, times 1 times 10 to the second, press enter, you're going to find out that this equals 3.0 times 10 to the negative 2 centimeters, to be most exact, because that's the only unit left over. Okay, now that we have the length in centimeters, we're going to cube it to get to volume. So we literally cube the whole thing, and this you would have to do in your calculator. You know, enter 3 times 10 to negative 2, and then cube that. You're going to end up finding out that this is equal, ultimately, to 2.7 times 10 to negative 5. Here I just kind of spelled out the steps as if you were to do this manually. Um, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm just kind of like double checking with my exponents whether this makes sense. Uh, but you will end up finding out that cubing 3 times 10 to the negative 2 is going to yield 2.7 times 10 to negative 5. And since you're cubing centimeters, this will end up being cubic centimeters. All right, so now this is the volume in cubic centimeters. And here's where I'm going to use the relationship that 1 cubic centimeter equals 1 ml. And I'll place the 1 cubic centimeter on the bottom, the 1 ml on top to cancel out cubic centimeters. Then I will make use of the fact that for every 1,000 millimeters, there is 1 liter present. Right? And once again, I place the milliliters on the bottom to cancel out units. And in 1 liter, we have... 10 to the 6 microliters. So place the 1 liter on the bottom, 10 to the 6 microliters on top. Everything will cancel out except the microliters. And if you carry this calculation in your calculator, you're going to find out that the final volume will be 2.70 times 10 to the negative second microliters. So be, you know, a little mindful about your units. I recommend that you definitely write them down when you're doing these conversion factors because they tell you what needs to come next in your series. All right, so in the next video, I will talk to you about the different mathematical tools that we're going to use in this class, specifically density and temperature. Okay, so see you in the next video.